Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about primitive technology straight out of the sweet potato patch while we build this battery here to help us understand these batteries here a lot better for our off-grid electricity storage needs. Whether you have plans to take your RV living off-grid or dreams to go ahead and build out an off-grid bug out van to go hang out in the desert in. Daydream seeing yourself living in an off-grid cabin out in the woods or you're a minimalist that loves the idea of living in a tiny house disconnected from the grid. You'll get something very important out of this video so let's go run over to the library real quick and have a short talk about battery technology. Oh, the day I break these chains. I'm bound for the life of the simple things. Okay, so what I have sitting here in front of me is enough to go ahead and build 18 different types of battery chemistry. So my undergraduate degree is in biochemistry and I had gone into that angle of science because what I find so exciting is that we use electrochemistry to be able to do work, which is pretty special. And if you notice here, <laughs> this clip of, from the Matrix. The human body generates more bioelectricity than a 120 volt battery and over 25,000 BTUs of body heat. Combined with a form of fusion, the machines had found all the energy they would ever need. There are fields, endless fields, where human beings are no longer born. We are grown. Isn't really all that far off from reality. All of life, everything that's living, is just one great big battery. Batteries are all about the chemistry and relationships. No, not those kind of relationships. The kind of relationship that's defined by Ohm's law here depicted in this picture. Batteries are going to have a positive terminal and a negative terminal. On most batteries that you see like within a car or deep cycle batteries, your positive terminal is going to be red and your negative terminal is going to be black and anode is going to be your positive terminal in this kind of battery and so I got two items here that are going to be utilized as anodes so the first one here is some scrap copper that I was able to cut out of a piece of scrap copper wire that I got over at Lowe's for almost nothing the next one here is a chunk of graphite that I was able to cut out of a 25 cent carpenter's pencil. And then our cathodes over here, first of all, I have a chunk of magnesium that I was able to saw out of a magnesium fire starter. I had to be really careful with that guys actually because uh, if it gets too hot you can actually start a fire so I did it all by hand. The next one here I have is a zinc plated galvanized carriage bolt that I picked up over at Lowe's I think for like 18 cents a piece or something like that. So I'm going to try to bore you here with the bore model. This here is a diagram, a simple diagram, to kind of talk about an atom. And that little red guy in the very center you're seeing, he's known as the nucleus. Inside there you have protons and neutrons. The protons have a positive charge. Those bluish, purplish kind of colored guys there rolling around the red guy, those are electrons in this model and those are the guys that we are going to be very interested in since electricity coming from batteries is based upon excited electrons that are being sent in a current and that's what allows our appliances to do work. Before we get started actually making our battery out of this line here, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about 
why this experiment even works. And to start off with, I had told you a bit about these guys uh, being your anodes and cathodes here. And all of those have a relationship amongst one another that we talk about as being is their electrical potential. And that is what determines the actual volts that are able to be produced from any kind of cell, whether it's from this lime that we're going to do or whether it's going to be from that, you know, lead acid battery that you frequently see out there being used. Now, on right here to the side of me is a table of electronegativity. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do to start off with is probably the most common experiment or exercise when you're developing a battery from a lime and that's we're going to use this zinc plated carriage bolt and this copper wire that's used to basically ground things and these two guys both have a relationship so each one there's a certain willingness for them to give up those electrons and then a certain willingness for them to accept the electrons and that's what you're seeing in that chart that you see right there. The more positive the number is, so the greater the number, the more likely and the more it is good at accepting electrons, so taking them. Whereas the ones that are got a minus sign around them, they're more into giving up electrons. So the lower the number or the more negative the number, the more likely they are to give up electrons. And that relationship between the two is what's going to cause our voltage. Now, as you can see in this chart here, copper has got a 0.34 on the positive side. And there's a value for the zinc here that's going to be minus 0.76. So now those numbers, how it works is you take the number that's got the largest, most positive number, you take that number, and then you subtract the one that has the lower number. And in this case, our zinc has a negative number. So when we subtract a negative number from a number, we end up adding it. So we got the 0.34, and we're going to add the 0.76. And so if everything was perfect, these were 100% pure elemental zinc and copper, then what we would see is about 1.1 volts from a cell, assuming that the electrolyte isn't limiting anything, and there's no like internal resistance that's causing a problem. Now, Obviously, these aren't pure, and there's going to be limitations to this line. So we're not going to get a full 1.1, but theoretically, it could produce up to that. Now we're ready to start building batteries. And what I have here is a multimeter, and this allows us to basically measure the values of each one of those relationships here in this image of Ohm's law. So it gives us the ability to measure voltage, amperage, and resistance. And we can do it both in a DC version and then also in an AC version. So AC would be like from your house that comes from an electrical grid and DC would be from batteries, which is what we're dealing with today. Okay, now that we know what a multimeter is, I've gone ahead and I've set it to measure volts. If you remember, this silver guy here was our zinc guy and he was a negative number on our electronegativity. So he's gonna be our black or our negative terminal. And the copper here was our positive terminal because he's gonna be accepting the electrons. So let's go ahead and test our voltage. So our voltage, we're getting about 0.95. Theoretically, we should get 1.1, but 0.95 is pretty good since these aren't pure, and I'm sure there's plenty of resistance going on inside a lime. <laughs> so let's go ahead and test what kind of amperage we're getting here. 
So I just moved it to an amperage setting. If you remember, that's the guy that's trying to squeeze through the resistance. So that's the current, that's those electrons. How much of those electrons can push through there? So just over, we're getting just over half of a uh, milliamp out of here, which isn't too bad considering this is just a line. And all we're using as an electrolyte is our citric acid. Now let's go ahead and measure our ohms. So this is our resistant. This is a guy that's pulling the rope. Oh, it pegged and, and went off the chart. Let's go up to 2,000 kilo ohms, which is a pretty big resistance. And that's the highest reading that we can take with this device. Wow, spikes it. So this lime has in excess of 2,000 kilo ohms. We got a quick reading from our zinc and our copper. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use each one of our anodes and our cathodes and I'm going to show you which one is going to be the better battery arrangement, so the better battery chemistry. And then I'm going to compare that one, the one that wins, into each of the other types of uh, items I have here. And that's exactly what we get. So we're getting an excess of it, a full volt, so 1.11 volts. So this is a better cell just by having the carbon in here. And that's what the uh, pencil lead is, is carbon. It's what's called graphite. Let's quickly go ahead and test our amperage. Let's see if our amperage is any better. And our amperage is higher as well with this arrangement. Not all that much higher. It's pretty close to the same in amperage. The real winner is the voltage. Let's see about our resistance. So resistance is considerably less with the carbon in here. So zinc carbon is definitely better than zinc copper. Let's go ahead and use our magnesium guy here. So magnesium is much more electronegative than zinc. Test here is the voltage. Much better. So the magnesium to carbon is giving us more than one and a half volts out of this lime cell. Let's go ahead and check our amperage now. So now our amperage is much higher at over one milliamp. So it's definitely looking like magnesium carbon is the best, but we should still test, just for the sake of it, the magnesium copper just to make sure. And here we go. So not quite as good as the carbon. The carbon is slightly better at accepting electrons than our copper. So our best arrangement is the graphite or the carbon and the magnesium. And that's what we'll use to test the rest of the way through. You want to solve this problem. I want to get my pardon. So why don't we just try it, okay? And not worry about what plants crave. Brando's got what plants crave. Yeah, it's got electrolytes. What are electrolytes? Do you even know? It's what they use to make Brando. Yeah, but why do they use them to make Brando? Because Brando's got electrolytes. How did the world ever get like this? So what the heck are electrolytes? Basically, they're any form of ion that has basically a positive or a negative charge. It can be anywhere from one atom, atom. to multiple atoms that happen to be put together and then exist with a negative or a positive charge, and that can be multiple positive or negative charges. Okay then, what's the purpose of these ions or electrolytes when we're dealing with these batteries? What electrolytes are, when it comes to batteries, is they're what allows those electrons that we take from our little terminals 
the negative terminal and send it over to the positive terminal. That's how they make it across. This next section, what we're gonna be up to is trying to determine which one of these, the lime, lemon, the sweet potato, or the russet potato is the better source of electrolyte. Thank you for watching everything that you've seen here today. I have to say that I got to wrap things up here and kind of leave you hanging, sorry. And then also, just to let you know, in the next video, we're going to be charging a cell phone and I'm going to have another battery chemistry to show you all. So there's plenty more coming. There's probably at least another video this length and then we'll be able to dive right into the off-grid battery stuff. Get out there, connect with people, live your big story, and make sure you do something every single day to reduce world suck. Peace, it's guys. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I tell you all about it when I see you again. We come a long way where we be